Hey friends, welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast here where we talk about all things EVs. We speak to expert guests and everyday folk, cover breaking news, debate certain discussions around electrification, and everything in between, really. One thing that we love to do uh, at Out of Spec, just generally everyone, is go on a road trip, especially an electric one. And we pick on the attitude of, hey, this is an experience, it's an experiment, and we are doing our research as well as having fun. Today, I want to focus on the major takeaways that I have gathered from folks I know and also my own experience on electric vehicle road trips. A lot of people haven't been on EV road trips. Some people have been on so many. Either way, I think there's some things, electric or not, that you should remember for a road trip and definitely electric that you might want to know if you are going on another electric road trip. I've met people along my road trips that it's their first one and maybe they needed a cheat sheet. I just recently went on a thousand mile road trip from Tennessee to Colorado in the VinFast VF8 and it sparked my idea for this. So first off, I'm going to give you my list. And then of course, in the comments later, let me know what you think people should remember on an electric vehicle road trip. Let's plug in for some tips. This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. So I'll start by saying that EV road trips do not have to be the bane of your existence. Are they different than ICE road trips? Yes. Can I get everywhere in an EV that I can in an ICE vehicle? I, sh I sure have been able to. but. You've got to have a positive attitude, a bit of forethought. Come on, it's not that hard. And if you want to have fun, sprinkle, sprinkle a bit of an adventurous spirit on top. Like I said, I took a road trip in the VinFast via Fate, my company car lease with out of spec from Tennessee to Colorado. But I've done other EV road trips as well in Teslas, in Rivians. And I think that's really all the electric vehicles I've taken on really long road trips. Otherwise, I've done plenty of thousands and thousands of miles of road trips in normal internal combustion engine cars in the U.S. and abroad. I've taken road trips on motorcycles. There are things you don't want to forget. There are things that you definitely want to remember, whether it comes to supplies or behavior or research, and might as well make it kind of easy for you and give you a list. So here is what I think you need to know and do if you're going to take an EV road trip. First off, know your EV. Become familiar with it. Even if you're renting it, spend 10 minutes, I don't know, looking up a video about a review, uh, calling a friend who knows about electric vehicles, if you have one, if you're lucky, looking at the car's website, all of that. But if it's your own EV, definitely know your EV. It's probably likely that you know which connector that you have, but just in case you're renting or you know, you just need a quick refresher for the DC fast charging. You definitely want to know what kind of connector you have because that can limit your stations. The CCS connector is very common, as is the Tesla connector. But if you have a Tesla, you probably know. And then the Chatamo is what we see with, for instance, the Nissan Leaf. The J1772 connectors are the ones you're hopefully going to see at your hotel when you book them. You can go to the U.S. Department of Transportation and they have a lot on EVs as well, including where you can find these charging locations typically, the typical power outage and stuff like that. What's your range on the highway generally versus city driving? If you always drive in the city and commute, it might be different than holding a steady 75 on the highway for hours. Take it out for a test drive. If you normally commute around town and just take it to the grocery and this is your first time taking it on the road, take it out for a test drive on the highway. See what happens. Notice the differences between the efficiency. Know your driving modes. Drive, there's usually a normal performance and eco mode. I think generally eco mode is a good spot to be, but look into what these modes actually say in your manual to know which one would be best for being the most efficient on the highway. Typically, you don't want to be just burning up your battery unless that is your specific goal. And your vehicle health, of course, for any road trip, ensure that your tires are in good condition, that if you have fluids, they're topped off, windshield wiper fluid and that the vehicle's software is up to date for optimal performance. I don't think this is necessarily always uh, essential, but it could mean something a lot different from what your experience could be because over-the-air software updates can change a lot in terms of your experience with your car. Apps. Oh my gosh. I know that you might not love phones. You might not love apps. 
I don't care. You're going to have to get over it when it comes to an electric vehicle road trip. You need apps on everyone's phone in the car. I mean it. I met someone who only one person in a group of three had the Electrify America app on their phone and then could start the charge and they walked away. And then the other folks were just kind of like, I don't know what to do. I was like, well, I have my app, but I guess let's see if we can just swipe your card. Apps make things a whole lot easier. That's what they're made for. Unfortunately, there's multiple apps that you have to use. Some are for charging, some are for planning, um, some are for both. But PlugShare is a no-brainer for me. PlugShare is essentially Yelp for EV charging. If you have another one that you like, let me know. But PlugShare is my go-to. You can see a whole map. You can add filters in for the kind of speeds that you're looking for, the kind of connector, if you're driving a Tesla or not, or a Leaf for Chatamo. And also, they have updates from people who have been there recently. You can also see what EV they drive. And that kind of crowdsourcing is essential because... You want to know what the most recent experience was like for someone because it might have changed. Someone might have come and damaged the charger. Something might have happened to the grid there, and that's far away. And you need to be able to say, okay, I'm confident that if I go there, I'll be okay. A better better route planner is also a great option for EVs. So if you can see here, you know, you can make a whole road trip option and it'll fill in the places. There was this old website called Road Tripper that you could do similar things, but a better route planner is something that a lot of our viewers like as well. So in terms of the charging options uh, and the apps for those in America, at least you need Electrify America, ChargePoint, and EVgo probably. For some things, you can start a charge. You can start a charge at like ChargePoint and EVgo all through like ChargePoint or EVgo apps because they have the shared information. Electrify America, just just get that one. They're kind of everywhere, so you probably will need it. And then also you can have a credit card and swipe it, but there's not always a guarantee that like their their chip reader is working or that they're able to take payment that way. So it's really good to have an app with the charging providers, EA, ChargePoint, Electrify America, um, EVgo, and have your payment information up to date, buddy. You don't want to get some vague error and not be able to start a charge and then realize, oh, because my credit card expired. Supplies. You definitely need your EV home charger. So this is the mobile charger that probably came with your EV. You can plug it into either the normal three-prong 110 outlet or the 220, 240 outlet. That is the range outlet, the NEMA 1450. Take that with you. If you stop somewhere and you're able to plug in or if it's like worst case scenario or if you stay somewhere with a friend on your way on your road trip, you're able to plug in and get some charge slowly overnight. But um, it, it's it's great to have. Always keep that in your car. I've sometimes taken it out of my car because I thought it would be good and convenient later. It was not. I definitely wished that I had had it. <laughs> and for some, of course, you might need an adapter. We're looking at here the CCS Combo 1 adapter from Tesla so that you can charge your Tesla at CCS stations like EVgo or Electrify America until they get those native NAX connectors put in on those cables. And then also you can get the Tesla to CCS adapter if you are a lucky one like Rivian or Ford who now have access to the supercharger network and more automakers will but that is the only two that are as of June the end of June 2024. So yeah don't forget your adapters they open up networks to you and um, typically you want to get them from the automaker although there are some third-party manufacturers can't endorse those myself. Okay charging etiquette when you get to a charger you need to know the right ways to behave. Just like your parents hopefully taught you manners, I'm going to teach you some charging etiquette. 80% is probably the most you need. To sit there and get from 80 to 100% will not only take a lot more time because as you fill an EV battery with energy, it gets harder and harder to push energy into that battery. So the time gets longer and longer. 80% is probably all you need to get to the next charging station. That is kind of the goal. Charge up to just as much as you need to get to the next furthest charging station confidently. Also, it's a bit of a social spot at EV chargers because, hey, you've got a cool EV. What are you doing? We're sitting around. We want to make friends. Be nice to people. Be curious. I think that's the most fun. And I think, you know, maybe the past four years got us a little bit scared socially. Don't worry. Socialize with people. They are always nice. I have found that out at every charging station I go to. Either they're quiet and they don't really want to chat, or they're really nice. People are typically nice, I've found. Always unplug your vehicle when charging is complete and avoid blocking other charging spots. 
Report any issues with chargers to appropriate app or service. This is important too. If you're at a charging station and it doesn't work for you and another person, just log in there and report it. Put it on PlugShare and report it, but also report it to the uh, EV charge point uh, ARP operator so that they know that there's a problem with it. And sometimes they even give you like $5. Thanks for reporting this problem. And you'll probably need to do that through their apps. Okay, your charging strategy. I just hinted at this before, but know your efficiency as well. This is part of know your EV. Always have a idea of how far your EV will go at this kind of speed. Okay, always have a backup charging station as well in mind in case that your primary choice is inoper in inoperative. Hopefully you've used PlugShare, you've planned your route. I like to plan my route like in Excel sheets <laughs> and just note like all the locations, the distances between them. That might be definitely overkill, but I have fun with it. And I do a lot of trips, so I tend to try to organize them a little bit. If you have a plan and the plan changes, you just make another plan. But have a backup charging station in case the one that you're stretching to ends up being a bit too far away. Maybe you've been cranking the AC. Maybe you've been going 85 miles per hour and you didn't really know it. Maybe you have a really big headwind. Um, so just in case either your efficiency is lower than you think or the next charging station is inoperative. Keep your speed consistent. Don't overuse the AC if you're running low. Slow down if you, if you see that you're running low, but have this under your charging strategy. Additionally, under charging strategy is know your chargers. There's three different kinds of chargers. Level one, the standard 110, 120 volt outlet in your home. It's not ideal to road trips because it's pretty slow charging. But um, if, you're, if you're leaving your car for a while, if you have a long stop on a road trip, at least you can get something. Um, and that's overnight. I mean, a long stop. Level two is more of that NEMA 1450, 240 volt outlet. It provides far more range per hour. It's good for those longer stops overnight. Hopefully, if you stay at a hotel, it has one of those. And then there is DC fast charging. This is the best for road trips because you're charging up quickly, you're getting on your way. It draws a ton more energy from the grid. It puts a ton more energy into your battery quickly, quicker than level one and level two. And most cars can charge from 10 to 80% in 20 to 40 minutes. Uh, the best are closer to 20. The more average are 30 minutes and, and up. Plan for additional travel time. Charging brakes take a bit longer, but if you really get it honed in, you know exactly, maybe you just need 20 minutes to get enough charge to make it to the next charging station, and you want to arrive low as well. So if you charge up to 80, you want to arrive 10% or lower. That's a bit scary for a lot of first-time EV drivers, but keep that in mind and get better and better at that. It's better for your battery. It's better charging practice. Take our word for it. Watch our out-of-spec motoring trips to see how we do that. Sometimes I've ended up at a battery at a state of charge that is not low. It was kind of my only choice, or maybe I messed up. It happens, but that's the general approach. At charging brakes, when you're charging, use them. Don't just sit in your car for the love of all things good. Get out, stretch your legs, um, rest and recharge yourself. Go walk around, say hi to people, um, stimulate your brain. Life is too short to just sit in your car while it's charging. Do things. That's my advice. For lodging, if you are staying overnight, then look for hotels or Airbnbs with EV charging options. Websites like Stay In Charge with the letter N, Expedia, and Airbnb allow you to filter for properties with charging options, which is really great. You would like to see that. Uh, for instance, it's kind of annoying. I have like a credit card that I get travel points and on their system, there's no filter for EV charging when they like give me like 10 points for hotels or whatever. They don't let me know what has EV charging. So then I have to go to another app. So that's a note to Capital One, please make that better. But those apps are great. You want to find charging if you can have it overnight because your car is just sitting there. Check PlugShare and call the hotel though. I have gone booked a hotel because it had said it had charging and I get there and I asked the front desk, like I looked across the parking lot, where is it? Oh, we actually don't have that. Okay. <laughs> so sometimes they just don't work also. So that's why you want to call the hotel ahead of time, look at PlugShare. And sometimes they're just not there apparently. So have a backup plan. Maybe there's a DC fast charger that you could go to before you go to bed and check into the hotel or the next morning before you take off. Again, backup plan. Also, I've found that pet friendly and EV friendly are not always the same thing with hotels, which is unfortunate because I am both EV and pet friendly. So keep an eye out for that. General road trip stuff. I 
on, at, at out of spec, we are tracking the data. So what I learned was that I took a lot of photos, I took videos, but that notebook that I took along, I should have been keeping notes in it. What did I arrive at? What does the car says my efficiency is, you know, miles per kilowatt hour? What kind of charging am I getting? How far did I travel? How far did it say I had of estimated range before I get to, got to my next stop? I think it's kind of fun. You can track and learn about your EV because it is new technology. There are new ways of driving. It's not just miles per gallon. Keep water, like a whole jug of water in the back that you forget about that you can refill for your dog or your cat or your goat, whatever, or your family or your friends or yourself. Have water, have snacks, have a cooler to keep things cool, especially in the summer. I think it's good to keep a pillow, even just a small one for your lower back when you're driving or to prop your side up. I really like the camping pillows that actually inflate when you blow into them. Keep a flashlight. Some flashlights also function as defense uh, options. Keep a first aid kit. Maybe you need some pepper spray as well. Keep an atlas. I always keep an atlas in my car. I'm honestly not sure how old it is, but I would hope it would help me if for some reason I was lost and couldn't talk to anyone. For chargers for your phone, make sure to bring the right cables, uh, external batteries and adapters for different ty types of chargers. I have batteries banks that have solar, little solar panels, panels on them. So I put them up on my dash. I put them in a seat or in a window of the car that is hit by the sun. And I get some solar energy to charge that up in case at night or if I go on a hike or whatever and need to charge my phone, I have that ready to go. They typically have a flashlight built in as well, something like that. So a high capacity power bank can be a lifesaver if you need to charge your device while you're away from your car. Wipes and napkins, very essential. Sunblock. When you're sitting in a car, the sun is still getting to you. A phone mount is really helpful. Don't hold that phone in your hand. Don't play with your phone when you're driving. Even if your car is driving itself, be careful. You might want some auto tools, something to check uh, pressure, something to be able to get a bolt off, tire pressure or get a bolt off if you need it, whatever, just a general small auto tools uh, aspect. And then, you know, maybe a trash bag. In terms of your attitude, I think this is very important when it comes to EV road tripping. It's an adventure just like any other, but it does require a bit of forethought. But if I can do it, so can you. Especially if you do a bit of fun preparing, it doesn't have to feel like a chore. You get to have a bit of fun planning. Also, have a stretch routine where you hit, you know, arms, shoulders, back, legs, everything at your stops. And if you're lucky, you really need to take this along with you on an EV road trip, a Rafiki. But not everyone has a Rafiki, so I'm the lucky one here. Hope you enjoyed that. Just a run through of my top tips for EVs. If you liked this kind of tip thing, let me know if you would want other tips. Um, and if you have other tips that you think people should consider, please list them below. I think I might put a comment below with just all the tips kind of summarized and maybe you can comment under that or whatever. I thought it would be fun. EV road trips are fun. Promise. Sometimes you just got to prep for life, but we can all do it. Drive safe, stay charged, and I'll see you on another episode of the Out of Spec podcast soon, y'all. Bye-bye.